I know what you're thinking, but Angel, you never draw guys. How are you supposed to show us how to sketch males? That's a good point. Anyway, I already did tutorials on how to lay in a portrait and the planes of the head, but I feel kind of bad for using clickbait titles, not because they didn't work, but because now it's super confusing and you don't know which video is which. But today I'm going to be combining the knowledge from both of those videos. I'm going to be drawing some features on top and I'm going to draw in real life these three different references and try to explain some shit. And since I'm going to be both painting and talking, I'm going to try to be a little bit more serious. So what I always start with is the laying, and I already did a tutorial about this, but it's pretty much a bunch of basic lines and trying to figure out the proportions of this particular portrait. And if you're still a beginner, you might want to use some guidelines from the reference to your drawing just to kind of help you figure out the proportions. But the goal will always be to be able to draw this free hand and be able to make somebody look like a human. So after the laying, I go on top and I draw the planes of the head, and I'm using this thing to help me out called the sorrow head and if you're just starting out it's really important to keep these two exercises separate like first learn how to do the laying and then learn how to do the planes on top because otherwise it's just gonna look like a bunch of triangles on top of bullshit and then after I have the planes I pretty much go on top and I draw the features of the face and it's actually super easy to draw them if you have the correct planes the problem is people don't understand the structure of the face and they just draw some features floating in the air and they're like why does it look wrong and it's really important when you're doing the sketch to be using the same layer that you did the planes on because if you start out a new layer and try to do a clean sketch you're gonna lose even the little structure that you have and the sketch is supposed to be a map of of showing you where the shading is gonna be it's not just something that you're gonna post on Instagram to show one of your works in progress but it's just there to help you get to the next stage and in this stage you can still see a little bit of the planes but I pretty much go in with an eraser and I fade the ones that are not gonna be important and I'm thinking more about core shadows and form of the face so in this stage is where I figure out all of the planes and the structure and when I get to this I start thinking about lightning and like the weather and shit and the sketch is a lot more about line weight and just making things prettier. So if you don't understand this shit, stay away from that shit. And by the way, did you see me give the credit right there on the bottom? She, I'm a new man. And by the way, why do all the models be looking like a snack? Mm. So the first thing I do before I start sketching is I go to filter, camera roll filter, and I try to bring up the shadows of the reference so you can clearly see all the details that are hiding in the hair. Like people will be working with these dark ass photos not even knowing what's happening out there. You fucking need to bring that shit up. Look at that. Oof. Magic. So I always start out with a circle or potato in your case, just trying to find where the cranium of the head is, which is pretty much this thing right here, and it's really important to remember that it doesn't include your hair, it's pretty much only your skull. So from here I do the center line, I find the side of the face, I do a line for the eyebrows, a line for the forehead, line for the nose, line for the mouth. I find the jaw line, I connect the eyebrow to the ear. And this is pretty much the basic proportions. And I see a lot of people trying to figure it out as if it's a fucking math problem. Like, this is gonna be one third and this is gonna be one third. Forget about this shit. Just try to find the proportions of this particular portrait and just draw them as close as possible. Again, if you need help, you can draw like guidelines to help you where everything is supposed to be but just make sure that whatever you're drawing is always going to be the exact size as the reference and is going to be as close as the reference as possible like I see a lot of people doing these tiny ass drawings and then the reference is like three times bigger and it's actually in the other room like bitch how are you gonna learn like that so from here I just do these loose lines trying to figure out all the basic planes of the head like the jaw the side the other side of the jaw, the mouth area, the side of the forehead, the ear, and then finally I do the neck, but as always make sure that the neck is connecting inside of the head and it's not just two lines coming out of a dead man. And as I'm drawing these lines, I'm constantly going back and forth to the reference, trying to compare my drawings and the angles that I'm drawing. Like I'm looking at the angle of the eyebrows, I'm looking at the size between the mouth and the nose, I'm looking how big the mouth is compared to the eye, like it's just important to constantly comparing the reference in your drawing. Don't just go in with your drawing and be like, woo, 
I'm laying a portrait. Think about this shit. So once I have this basic structure, I start thinking about where the eyeballs are going to be sitting inside of this plane. And when you're drawing the eyeball, make sure that you're thinking about the eye from corner to corner, not the fucking pupil or the eyelid. Then I find the angle of the nose, which is gonna be kind of like this, because this guy has the bird nose. Then I'm thinking about where the wing is going to be compared to the eyeball, and then I find the mouth. So make sure that you figure out all of these planes and the whole cheekbone area before you move on for the eyes. And then when I'm drawing the eyes, I'm really thinking about how the eyelid is going to be wrapping around the eyeball. So you can kind of see how it has planes of its own. It's not just one line on top of a, another line and it just ends up looking like an almond or a vagina. Hmm. So I'm thinking about the tear duct, then it goes up the eyeball across it and then it goes down and then before you draw the bottom eyelid you need to figure out where the iris is going to be and how it's going to be sitting on top of the eyeball because a lot of people draw them afterwards and they either end up with lazy eyes or they just look like they lost their soul and the same thing would be for the bottom eyelid is the top just think about how it's wrapping around the eyeball and then you have the cut of the top eyelid and when you draw that don't just repeat the same shape that you have in the top eyelid because it's just gonna look boring as fuck. Pay attention to actually what the shape of the person's eyes are. So this for example is like one line and then it's a curve and then it goes like this and then on top it's actually gonna be a whole different angle. So make sure that you draw that and not just repeat two lines on top of each other. Then on top you have the eyebrows and again, think about the shape of the person's eyebrows. Don't just draw them straight like fucking pieces of wood, but actually look at this shape and just try to represent it. And make sure that the eyebrow looks like it's actually sitting on top rather than just like a tattoo that's on your face. Great, why does my dude look like he's fighting depression or something? Then from the corner of the eyebrow to the corner of the top eyelid, you're gonna have this plane and then on the other side as well. And then that plane is gonna have two other planes in itself. And then you're gonna have another plane connecting the eyebrow to the nose and it usually has a more of a weird shape, but you really have to pay attention to the reference. So actually right here, you're gonna have two different planes. You're gonna have the eye bag and then you're gonna have this with blue, which is going to be the eye socket. For example, in this painting that I did, this thing right here is going to be the bottom of the eyeball and this thing is going to be the corner of the eye socket and they're going to be shaded completely different and you need to understand this shit. Then you have this whole plane of the side of the nose which is not going to be straight but it's actually going to be curved because the bone is sitting in like this and then the bottom is going to be like cartilage and whatever the fuck is in your nose. So later on when you're shading the nose, pay attention to these planes and actually think about them rather than just shading blindly. Then right here you're gonna have the bottom plane of the nose and see how it's wrapping around the nose. And it's the same with the wings, see how they're wrapping around and actually creating a hole. A lot of people just draw the hole as if it's fucking Voldemort. You actually need to create form around the hole and then the hole is gonna come out. Kinda like me. Then right here, you're gonna have the corner of the nose, which is a really important plane because a lot of people just draw the bottom of the nose and then the top of the nose and it just ends up looking like Phineas. And then the wing of the nose is going to be wrapping around and touching the corner. And the reason why I keep explaining this shit and it's so important for you to actually get references and study this is because when you actually get into shading, you're not gonna know what to shade unless you understand what's there. Like you might be able to pull it off with some sketching because you just drew two lines in a hole but then when you get to the shading part you're not really gonna know what to do you're just gonna do this random shading on top of shitty line art and that's why your fucking art looks flat then when you draw the jawline on the other side you're actually drawing this plane right here and this plane is going to be this triangle and this whole piece right here so this top one is actually going to be bone then you have muscle and then you have the mouth going out like this then it's coming in, then you have the chin, and then you have the corner of the chin. So it's actually one, two, three, four, five things. And people just draw one line. 
Then on the corner of the mouth, you usually see these dimples. And that's because all of the muscles of the face are going to be connecting to this corner right here. So there's gonna be a little dimple. And that's what makes you smile and frown and... And then for the lips, I usually just find this shape, the V, and then I just connect it to the dimples. Then you have the V on top, and then you have the bottom lip. And then on the bottom, you have this circle representing the chin. For the forehead, you have this ridge right here, and then you have a curve. I'm gonna do a whole separate tutorial on hair and how to draw it, but for now, just try to break it down into planes the same way that you broke down the face. So you're thinking about these major shapes, and you're thinking about them in 3D space and how they're connecting to each other. You're not just drawing grass hair, you're just thinking about planes. So see how instead of a straight line, I'm thinking about this more of a straight curve and how it's going to be wrapping around the head. It's not just going in and laying flat like some greasy ass hair. And then for these pieces, there's gonna be a plane right here and it's all gonna be in shadow because that's going to be the bottom of the whole shape. And if you really start thinking about hair as a bunch of forms, it's gonna be much easier for you to shade afterwards because you're really gonna be shading planes rather than just individual pieces of hair. I usually kinda make him look like he has horns. And right here on the side, you have a curve going in like this, then a straight line, and then another curve. And then a triangle connecting to the back of the ear. And even for short hair, I'm still thinking about direction and planes. I'm not just drawing it like this, but I'm thinking about major shapes. Then you have the ear connecting to the jaw. I do a curve to find the top. Then I do a curve to find the bottom plane. Then another curve like this. And then you have this little wave like that. And also you need to show that the ear is going to be throwing a shadow on itself. That's how you make it look more 3D rather than just a flat shape. For the neck you have the major muscle like this and then you have the Adam's apple like that. So that's gonna be the second stage, the planes of the head. And fuck me, I didn't really save the last one, but I'm gonna show you a screenshot. And from here, it's gonna be much easier to just clean it up and turn it into a final sketch. So all you have to do is grab a bigger eraser and start fading all of the planes that are not gonna be in the final. Make sure that you don't completely erase them because then you're gonna lose all of the structure, but you just don't want them to interfere with the shading. So I pretty much just leave all of the features. And once you become more advanced, you can kind of skip the planes and just get to the features. But in the beginning, that's gonna be super important for you to do so you can understand the forms of the face. What you basically want is to practice them so much that you just understand them inside and out and then when you're drawing you're not even thinking about it like you just know that there's gonna be a cheekbone there so usually I'll just go over all of the features just to kind of clean up the lines think about line weight I'm kind of checking for some final mistakes that I might see in the proportions anything that's wrong you might move something with the lasso and I think an important rule of thumb is that if you're asking yourself how do I draw this you need to go back to the planes and study rather than just trying to make clean line art so besides all of the features and the lines I'm starting to think more about the shadows and I'm gonna explain everything you need to know in a separate shading tutorial but for now just focus on those drop shadows right here this one this one and the core shadows that are gonna be on the nose and on the forehead so you're just doing this line is very gentle because you don't want them to be as harsh as the ones that you have for the line art because those for the line art are gonna be major planes these ones right here are just for you to know where to shade and use them as a map and when you combine your knowledge of the planes and the lines and also the shadows that's when your portrait really starts looking 3d and when you're drawing drop shadows it's really important again to think about planes don't just draw it straight like this but actually think about the plane that you're drawing. And also kind of look at the edges. If the edge is super sharp, you make your brush smaller so you can make it sharp. If it's kind of softer, you make it bigger and you don't press as hard. That's gonna be super useful afterwards when you do the shading. So this is it pretty much for this portrait. I'm gonna show you how to shade it next time. Now let's move on to the other ones because it's a fucking long ass tutorial. I might need to do some more twerking. All right, let's move on to the profile one. And you know what? I don't think enough people were doing profiles. I think people focus way too much on front angles and then they're like, well, why does he look so fucking flat? Because bitch, you don't understand the different angles. Start out with a potato circle, then the line, then the second circle, which is going to be right here. Then find the jaw, 
we have the ear right here eyebrow connected to the ear eye shape nose mouth then you have the arch the neck connecting to the head the side of the forehead the nose coming out then if you do a straight line from the corner of the nose to the chin you're pretty much gonna find an angle with the lips i see a lot of people draw the lips in profile view either like duck lips or <laughs> they looks horrible or they look super fucking small so draw the line and find out where the lips are gonna touch and again it's all angles so you look at the angle of the top lip then you look at the angle of the bottom lip and you just try to replicate that shape and it's coming in and then it's going out for the chin and think about how the eyeball is gonna sit in the eye socket and then you have the eyebrow on top and you know what, if this laying takes you more time, it's totally okay. I'm just kind of doing it faster so you don't die out of boredom. But take as much time as possible. Just make sure that all the angles and all the proportions are the same as in the reference. Then from here, you connect the eyebrow to the corner of the jaw, find the jaw muscle, and then you find the cheekbone. And this is pretty much the hardest thing to do in the laying in the planes of the head because if you fuck this one up, everything else is gonna be out of place. And you have the small triangle connecting to the cheekbone and you have the two circles that we talked about, one for the mouth area and the other one connecting to the triangle. For the eyelid, you have a curve like this and then a curve like this and then you have the eyelash. If the eye was open, I will just draw a circle, then I'll do the tear duct, a curve like this then the top eyelid, then the iris, and then the bottom eyelid. But see how it looks like it's wrapping around the bow. It's not just some flat shape sitting in nowhere. Then you have the shape of the eyebrow, you have the planes right here, then the shape of the nose, a little curvature, then the bottom of the nose, the wing wrapping around and going inside to create the hole, and then the bottom of the nose connecting to the lip to finish it. You have one curve for the top lip, then you find the dimple, you connect it, straight line, curved on top, then curve on the bottom, then a little dot in the middle to show that it's a little bit open, then another curve, and another straight line. Psh, I should be getting paid for this shit. The two curves for the ear, then this shape, then going out, and then this shape right here. The major muscle of the neck, the Adam's apple, and then a little part of the shoulder. Damn, I'm good, bitch. For the hair, thinking about those major planes, thinking about how it's gonna be curving around the head. But really, I just picture the skull and I picture the hair sitting on top. I feel like a lot of people, when they draw the face, they draw hair as it's like part of the face. Like hair actually sits on top, like a dildo. Actually, dildos don't sit on top. Damn, I've been misusing dildos this whole time. And see right here how the hair is wrapping around and then it's going in and then it, there's like a little bit of a ridge. Then a couple of pockets of like deep shadows to show the separation in the shape. And boom, the hair is done, bitch. Then to clean it up, just erase some of those planes and start repeating the features while thinking about line weight. Jesus, Angel, what does line weight even mean? Well, bitch. I can't explain everything in one goddamn tutorial. So you fade out the cheekbones and then you go back to show that core shadow, which is going to be this part right here. And then this part, which is going to be like the whole jaw muscle. Then you have some shadows right here on the neck and boom, it's ready for shading. And don't fucking judge me that it doesn't look like the model, okay? I, I was doing a fucking tutorial, not a fucking commission. All right, final angle. And where is your twerking you're asking? Yo, I'm the fucking worst worker alive. So the thing about front angles that you have to be careful about is just finding a good reference. Like a lot of people use these flat ass references without any lights and shadow. Like no wonder your portrait looks flat as fuck. Like you see this piece of shit art right here? What did I tell you? So make sure that you look for references with dynamic lightning, interesting shadows, and just photos that you can clearly see the planes of the head. So as always, potato circle first. And something that's gonna be specific for the front angle is that both sides of the head are gonna be chopped off. So you're not gonna purely see a circle, but you're more gonna see like a circle mixed with a square. A lot of people draw these big ass circles and all their heads end up looking like fucking watermelons. Then a front line in the middle, find the eyebrows, find the nose, find the chin, and a hairline. 
And then really important is to find out exactly how wide the eyebrows are gonna be. The biggest problem that people have with the front view is that all of their heads end up looking super wide. And that's because there's no perspective involved and everything ends up looking super flat, especially if you fuck up your proportions. So make sure that you're measuring everything, the space between the eyebrows, the eyebrows to the cheeks, the nose to the cheeks, and just keep on comparing it with your reference and just measuring useless shit. Then a circle to show the roundness of the forehead, then the eye area, then the circle for the mouth, then the ears, which are usually going to be at the level of the eyebrow, but because this head is actually tilted forward, the ears are gonna be a little bit higher. Then the arch of the side of the face, and whatever I'm doing in the front view, I always do it immediately to the other side to have symmetry. Then for the cheeks, usually people have a lot of problems because they draw them straight like this, and their portrait ends up looking like fucking Robocop. So what you have is that your face is gonna be a little bit wider right here where the cheekbones are and as it gets down to the chin, it's actually tapering off. So you have one curve for the forehead, then you have another curve for the side of the face, then another one for the cheek, and then you have the jawline. So that's one, two, three, four, and people just draw one straight line. Then you measure where the corner of the jaw is compared to the nose and you connect it to the chin. Then I find how wide the nose is and I do this shape. Find exactly where the mouth is compared to the nose and the chin. Do the center line and then do the lips. And then draw the major neck muscle. And finally the eyeball sitting in the eye socket. Again, take your time with this. Just make sure that the proportions are right. Even if it takes you one hour, two hours, five days. Then the first thing I find is the angle of the eyebrows and how they're gonna be sitting on top of the face. And eyebrows are especially important in front view because you don't have anything else really showing any angles. And cheekbones are especially hard in front view because they're gonna be sitting on the side of the face and when perspective warps them, they're gonna be incredibly small. A lot of people draw cheekbones like this on a front view and then everything else looks wrong. They're actually gonna be turned because of perspective and they're gonna be super tiny. And what's especially fucked up about this reference is that actually the cheekbone is throwing a shadow onto the cheek muscle and you might think that this whole thing is the cheekbone but you'd be fucking wrong because the cheekbone is actually gonna be a lot smaller and it's gonna be all the way up in here. So when you find references with strong light like this, make sure that you know which parts are shadow, which parts are planes. And that's another reason why you should really study this shit because once you get to shading, if you don't understand this, you might think, oh, I'm actually shading a bone and you don't even know what the fuck you're shading. So I pretty much start out with the jaw muscle, which is gonna be this triangle right here. And it's gonna be a lot, a lot smaller than what we drew in the other angles. So this in the blue is gonna be the jaw muscle and then this in red is going to be the cheekbone. And then this with the yellow, we're gonna have the triangle which is gonna be the extension of the cheekbone. And then here with green, we're gonna have the top side of the cheekbone. So those are the four planes that you need to find in the front angle and if you can't find them, you're fucked. By the way, I like how my drawing is just sitting here angry waiting for his turn like mm -hmm. So you have the cheekbone, the triangle, and then the top of the cheekbone. Great, right, now he looks even angrier. Then you're gonna have a little bit of space on the bottom, that's for the mouth opening, and that's where the shadow of the cheekbone is gonna be. And then here on the bottom, you have the jawbone. So one circle for the mouth, and then a bigger circle for the skin. Then you have the eyelid sitting on top of the eyeball. You can kind of draw the eyelashes on top to make them more eye-ish. Billy eye-ish. And as always, don't draw them individually, but actually all connect them into a shape like he's wearing an eyeliner. Then you have the planes between the eyes and the eyebrows, and then you have the side of the face. And then you have this plane, which I usually connect with this whole area, but in front of you, it's important to separate them so you can show that the face is turning around. Because again, no fucking perspective. Then you have bridge of the nose going out, going in, then going out like an hourglass. And then sometimes you might see the hole, sometimes you don't. It's kind of like real life. Dude, why does my guy keep getting angrier, bro? I'm gonna find your holes, damn. Draw the dimples of the mouth the V shape and then connect it to the corner. Then an opposite direction curve for the chin and this whole thing is going to be wrapping around in the opposite direction. Ridge of the forehead, side planes, corners of the ears, that shape right here and then busted ass hairline. It's not like mine. 
And then again, think about how the hair is sitting on top of the head. It's not part of the head. Draw the bottom plane to show that it's 3D and then show the sides are wrapping around the head. So those would be the planes for the front view. Fucking nightmare. Let's clean them up and try to make them better. Erasing all of the unnecessary shit, which is pretty much everything. And even though I mentioned it fucking 20 times, I still think I made the face too wide. So lasso to that bitch and move it to the right. So in front view, always, always pay attention of what's happening right here in the cheekbones and the side of the face. And especially in this reference, it's really important to add all the core and drop shadows just to kind of figure out proportions even more. So even though I'm looking at this shadow, I'm still thinking about the plane that's being below it. So you have this shadow, then you have the drop shadow on the nose, and then you have a core shadow along the nose, and then another drop shadow on the wing. Yeah, but what are all these core and drop shadows and stuff? I told you, uh, later, bitch. And when there's wrinkles on the face, like the forehead or the side of the face, you need to mark that. But again, make sure that it's done after the planes. So first you do skull and planes, and then you do muscles and wrinkles. So this would be the rough sketch for this portrait. We're fucking finally done, man. So these are all the three angles that I did. It took fucking longer than expected, but hopefully it was helpful somewhat. And you can download this P P PSD. PCD? Is that a drug? PSD for free down below in the description. All of the line work is gonna be in there and you can use it for whatever the fuck you want to. So check the descriptions for download it for free. And next time I'm gonna show you how to shape this, but you better fucking practice these ones first though. And if you want some fucking help and critiques and shit, you better check out my fucking Patreon, patreon.com slash Angel You might notice that I've reached $1,000 per month. Oh, oh yeah, what's that? Oh, I'm rich as a bitch. And I'm gonna have all my tutorials on YouTube for free, so that's where the information is. Like, I don't wanna make people pay for my tutorials. Not because I'm a good guy, but because that's not how marketing works. So all the information is here, but if you want some special attention, like more twerking, just kidding, the twerking is gonna cost you a lot more. You can check out my Patreon where I do weekly live streams for my patrons. I answer questions, I do critiques, I do overpaints. And just to show you I am playing, I'm gonna give you one of my Patreon live streams for free. Cause y'all keep playing with me, but I swear I got some useful fucking information and twerking. So check out the description, there's gonna be a link to my Patreon live stream from last week, over one hour and a half of critiques and questions. And if you wanna sign up, you can go to patreon.com slash Angel Woo, I got some good marketing for a stripper. All right, this is it for today, man. Thank you for watching. Go do your exercises, go watch the live stream, and I'm gonna talk to you next time, you bitch.